what words of encouragement would you give to, <laughs> to young women who are hearing uh, about you for the first time or anyone who wants to get involved in public service? I think it's really important to, uh, one, recognize that you can make a difference. Uh, and clearly in my life, you know, my mom uh, changed my life. And so to, one, recognize that we as individuals can make a difference no matter where you are. You certainly don't all have to run for office, but those of you who work at the Department of Labor here, you know what public service is. So one, to recognize you can make a difference. And I think another important aspect, if you're going to run for office, which of course it has been most of my adult life, is to be a risk taker and to be able to step out uh, outside of uh, your comfort zone and, and to make yourself vulnerable and, and uh, vulnerable to rejection because every time you run for office, people can uh, <laughs> say, we don't want you. So uh, those are two things. And then uh, well, my predecessor, Patsy Mink, who I really admire because she was the first woman of color ever to be elected to Congress and she represented Hawaii. But she and I shared something in common, and that is that we would always tell people, you have to uh, show up. Half the battle is showing up. So I would say that uh, in a nutshell, maybe those uh, three things, know that you can make a difference to take some risks and show up and keep showing up. That's great. Um, I recall uh, Pat serving with Patsy Mink as well, and she was, um, I guess, maybe in stature about four feet tall, yes. <laughs> but a powerhouse <laughs> of, a, of a woman yes. um, who had very strong convictions. And I'll never forget one day we were on the floor, and I think we were talking about issues regarding underrepresented groups, and she urged me to speak up on the floor. She actually demanded it. Yes. <laughs> and I'll never forget that because uh, here she was standing right yes. next to me about so high, and, and she, she was just telling me, Hilda, you have to speak up, you have to say something. And it's always good to have people like that around you to remind you why you're there mm -hmm. and the opportunities that we have that not everyone has to serve in the House of Representatives to be voices for voices that aren't heard uh, often. And uh, Patsy was just a trailblazer working on uh, Title IX, on athletics, women in sports. Mm -hmm. I mean, she just was way ahead of her time. And somebody that I know we're working on trying to honor uh, we have honored her in the past in the House, but I, I know that um, it's often hard for women, women of different um, ethnic backgrounds to consider running in public service or, or just putting themselves out there. Part of it is, I know, in my own culture, um, oops, <laughs> part of it is our, our culture telling us, well, you know, um, sit back, don't be the one drawing attention to yourself. Uh, in any way, and I know that maybe there's something you could share there with us with, with the Asian culture as well, how, how you dealt with that. I think the Asian culture, uh, basically, we're not confrontational, not particularly verbal, and clearly in Hawaii, that definitely is our culture. And I, I think that the API community on the mainland, as we in Hawaii refer to the continent, uh, that they've had to become, uh, um, I think, a lot more aggressive about certain things because I think the racism that they encounter, the, Ch the Chinese, the Japanese, the Filipinos, the, the minorities on the mainland have had to uh, deal with overt racism, which uh, where was not quite the case in Hawaii, although there, there are subtleties in Hawaii. But I, I think part of it is that, that you, this idea that you, you have to push yourself outside of your comfort zone. And I, I've personally had to struggle quite a bit to, uh, um, and I still struggle with that, which is to be verbal, to be an advocate, and, and uh, to push myself out of this narrow, comfortable range of behaviors that most of us uh, are very happy to be in. But the thing about politics, Hilda, is I, I know you've had this experience too, I certainly did, is that you know, here you are, you're, you can be uh, living a very private life and, and that's comfortable, but when you run for office, you have to go this way and you have to talk with people who you've never met before and suddenly, you know, there you are. I, I remember the first time I ever ran, ran for office, which was in 1980. And it was, I had run other people's campaigns for office, all males. And when I ran, I, I remember knocking on a door and I completely forgot what I was running for. <laughs> So it didn't exactly come naturally to me, but I did get better over time. 
but but really, uh, you know, we have a culture, the API culture, which is uh, um, not very verbal or confrontational. And I, and I think that there, there are, and I'm not saying that one has to be obnoxiously aggressive or anything. I, I really do value the different cultures and the perspectives we bring. Uh, and I think that uh, when we talk about diversity, uh, it's really important that uh, you know, people who are in positions of decision making reflect the populations. And if you're not at the table where the decisions are made, then decisions that impact the minority communities, API communities, get done without us ever being at the table. And that's why I'm such a huge proponent of diversity and why uh, organizations that support minority membership and um, in the business community uh, on, the, on the court running for office, those are really important uh, points of encouragement. And women and minorities, we respond to encouragement. If other people say, you can do it, it helps us a lot. That's great. Um, I think our, our uh, audience would like to know um, how you went through your your own education because you're comp you're quite accomplished and there's a lot I think that can be shared uh, if you want to shed some light on you know what how, how you got there what kind of help or mentoring or who was there anyone there to help help you out my mother was a single parent so she spent uh, all of her time working generally two jobs and and uh, I didn't speak any English when we first came here. We didn't have much. And, and literally, I remember the first place we lived in was a, a single room and basically like a boarding house. And we slept sideways on one bed. I never forget where I came from. And my mother, um, for some reason, and we all have these talisman. And she just decided that if I could only learn how to count from 1 to 100 in English, that everything was going to be OK. So she would come home late at night, and, and she would make me count from 1 to 100 in English. And it was something she uh, hung on to. But truly, the thing that changed um, you know, my life was, I believe, my love of reading. And so uh, it, th there are people, I, I still remember my librarian. She was six feet, and um, she would read to us. I, uh, my love of reading was awakened, and I've been reading ever since. I, I, I think literacy is foundational. I think education is foundational, and that's why uh, I sit on the Education and Labor Committee, where one of my major uh, focal uh, points is quality early education because you have to set the stage for success really early in life. And, and I do have a bill that the Education and Labor Committee marked up uh, after five hours of markup last year. It didn't make it to the floor. It's called the Pre-K Act. And it, uh, it's, it's one of the things that I've really spent my time pushing uh, for because there's all kinds of evidence. I like the fact that this administration, by the way, makes decisions based on facts and evidence. <laughs> and science. Big change, in my opinion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and there is all kinds of evidence, of course, to show that, that every dollar spent on quality education comes back to us multi and by multiples. But it, it really helps our kids to be able to succeed in school and in life. So that's, in my view, that's where a lot of our education money should go in the earliest ages.